Deep in the tropical rainforest of South America, a flash of colour in the green leaves tells predators that this area is riddled with danger. An army approaches. The name for a group of poison dart frogs is morbidly accurate. Their warrior paint is used to ward off potential predators. Their weaponry, poisoning glands concealed under their vibrant skin. More often than not, eating these frogs is a death sentence. This golden dart frog has enough poison to kill 10 men. So potent is the poison that it is used by the indigenous Embera people of Colombia to catch food. The poison may be used by humans in other ways. Research suggests a synthetic counterfeit could be developed into a painkiller. Poison dart frogs aren't the only creatures using colour to avoid predation. My name's Ray Barnett. Uh, my official job title is Head of Collections and Archives for the Bristol Culture Team, which is the part of the Bristol City Council that looks after things like its museums and art galleries. And here we're in the Bristol Museum and Art Gallery in our collection stores in the basement, in particular within the Natural History Collection. And uh, this is where I started work originally in Bristol as a natural history curator specialising in looking after the stuffed animals, the press plants, uh, but most importantly from my perspective, uh, the insect collections, which is what uh, I've been most interested in. Uh, pepper moths are an interesting species. They occur right across Asia, North America, but also of course in, the, in Europe. And here in the UK, they're not a particularly uncommon moth. Um, and they're one of about 200 moth species out of about two and a half thousand in the whole UK, uh, which show black forms as well as other more normal forms. So what are called melanic forms. So uh, a certain percentage of the population uh, appear as black rather than the peppered which is the original form that uh, everybody would know. They're called pepper moth because they're sort of white with a peppering of little black spots over in the normal form. The fascinating thing about the pepper moth is it's been used as the main example to illustrate how uh, industrial melanism, as it's termed, um, was identified uh, for the first time ever in the UK. So in the 1840s, uh, people started to notice that when they found these moths, as well as the normal white and pepper forms, there were these completely black forms appearing. And uh, it took a little while for people to work out what was happening, um, but quite quickly actually, people started to think this is probably related to the fact that um, the Industrial Revolution had led to the air becoming very polluted, and consequently where these moths hide during the day, changing colour. They tend to hide during the day as moths in the tops of trees and those trees have become sooty, covered with black deposits from all the um, kilns and furnaces and fires that were happening as part of the Industrial Revolution. So this is an example of evolution actually taking place in practice and scientists, people were able to actually study it right from the 1840s and continue to study it today and to work out exactly what's happening with this species. Um, what's happened with the, the pepper moth population is that um, you had the first proper black ones appearing say in the 1840s, late 1840s and then certain parts of the country, particularly say the West Midlands or the North West, where there's big industry, by the end of the 19th century most moths you found were the black ones and the peppered white ones were much less. And that continued throughout um, quite a large percentage of the 20, 20th century, but since the 1970s, mid 1970s, the populations of black ones seem to have started to decline more and that is a process that's been continuing since then. So here we are in 2018 today, and the number of black ones that you'll find is much, much less than it used to be. And in some parts of the country, it's very rare now to get a black one at all. So um, that is ascribed to the Clean Air Act that came in after the Second World War and started to clean up uh, the pollution in the country, plus the decline in the number of industries that do pollute anyway 
and the fact that people don't tend to burn coal in their houses as much as they used to. So that altogether means that the number of black ones uh, has dropped away. But it's, it's an absolutely fascinating species because as well as the uh, peppered ones, the typical forms, as well as the black ones, there are some that are sort of halfway in between. Uh, and they seem to be um, staying about the same numbers across the country. So the black ones disappearing again. The typical ones and these sort of intermediate forms you can still find quite regularly.